But a professional like myself, we have done things a certain way for so long that most backyard cooks, average cooks, starter cooks yeah. will never see it happen. Well, it's funny, too, being on the camera side. You, you, you film a subject that knows what they're doing, and then you film a subject that does not know what they're doing. Yeah. And even if that person's face is not on camera, and even if they're not saying anything, you can tell. Welcome, welcome to another episode of Cosmo Unfilter, starring my boy Wesley G. What if we started these like Joe Rogan and we just start talking about something? Man, you know, I've been listening a lot to him lately. Me too. Driving, driving back and forth. I think we 100% should start smoking weed and well, turning loose. I mean, I have other things to do generally during a day. Yeah, we'll get Miss Amy to drive you home. That's why his podcasts are so long, though. No, he I gets see. high at the top, and he's got to sit there for three hours to come down. No, there's three hours. Dude, Have they're you listened long. to the one with Jelly Roll? Yeah, it was great. Phenomenal. He's a great guy. Yeah. I have to say, this is an unpopular opinion. Uh, I don't really care for his voice. Who? Jelly Roll. His singing voice? I don't like his singing You're voice. That son of a bitch. He's got an amazing voice. His story's great. A drug dealer marries a hooker and then makes it. Yeah, on top of country music, pop music, like yeah. yeah. Like, well, he did. Well, he has like some rap music. He has pop music, and then he decided to do the country thing. That was like later in his career. That country shit is, yeah. That's what pop put him on the map. Yeah, yeah. He was on. I listened to that one, and then a few episodes later, another guy was on, and they mentioned the episode, and then they got off on this whole like they were like listening to his songs again. He's like, God, yeah. such a cool story. Like he really does like have his, a uh, way of speaking to favor. people. Yeah, that's the song. I was like, like listening to it, it, it I guarantee you, like you sit there and you go, well, I, I got a Bible on the nightstand. Mm. <laughs> it, it is it wrapped in leather. It's like I, you know, I charged my phone on it. <laughs> it is a King James Version. Uh, how'd you know this? Like, yeah, you know. Got me. Yeah, it's like that snapshot of like, a good song is like, anyone can relate to even yeah. if you don't know what the artist meant for it to be about right it like means something to you you know yeah it can be vague but yet there was another song i heard this the other day it was so vague that but it's, it's a popular song from 30 40 50 years ago uh and they talked to the artist and he goes no nah, it's just about me cleaning the house or something, yeah, like, sure. something crazy and you're like no man, like I lost a parent or you sure. know, a child, and this like hell. You remember, me, uh, you know, you remember Kale from church? Oh yeah, he wrote a song on one of his records. It's called Dina, like D I N A. Uh huh. And the lyrics are like, "Don't you cry, they can't hurt you." And it like you think like, "Oh, he's probably talking about, you know, his his wife or his girlfriend or whatever." Well, no, it was about his cat. Yeah, and we didn't know that until he told us. <laughs> like. <laughs> I guess his cat got out, and when he got his cat back, it was like this, like, oh, my God, my cat's... So it really definitely changed the song for me a little yeah. bit, but yeah. I think about that story when I see that song come on. Yeah. So this episode is about our cherry well, ribs that... So ribs and a good song are the same thing. Yeah, they are. However you uh, make your ribs, if you get them, ribs. get them across the finish line... This is going to be a really, really popular video... On YouTube, or it's going to tank. Sure. But I guarantee you, if people ate these dang things, yeah, they'd make them tomorrow. I have two things to say. The first thing I want to say is, a buddy of mine's been cooking baby back ribs, and these are his first, like his first attempts. Yeah. So he's cooked them twice now. I say that. It's been three times. He bought a three-pack at Costco. So he's done three, three different racks, three different times. His first ones were okay. The ones in the middle were his best, and he experimented a little with the third. He's wrapping them, and you're doing the whole thing. But we've been talking about doing spare ribs, and, like, that's kind of the next thing. But it's got me really thinking about all the differences of, like, what do you put in the wrap, and what do you season mm -hmm. with, and brown sugar, and you put a little uh, a little hack in there and try to throw us off and it's, when you made it's your wrap. what rap. I do all the time, but, it, you know, it, people go, well, you know, uh, online or, you know, because when people start finding you, they go, well, why should I trust you? How yeah. do I know you? And I'm like, you, I mean, 
you don't have to, but I have competed at the highest level in the world, period, and won one, you know, so I get it. You see a lot of different barbecue people online. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you just have to tell yourself not all are equal. Yeah, right? I mean, you pick your... I'm not your... taking anything away from anybody. Right. And you, you know? try them all, you might like one. Yeah, Make it man. the way you like. Do what's good for you. But I'm telling you right now, like, there's things that I do in the video, and I've said this, I can't tell how many times. If you really want to learn, watch the video, listen to the video, take notes, and then watch it again, but turn the sound off. Yeah. Because... A professional like myself, and I'm just being honest. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. But a professional like myself, we have done things a certain way for so long that most backyard cooks, average cooks, starter cooks yeah. will never see it happen. Well, it's funny, too, being on the camera side. You, you, you film a subject that knows what they're doing. And then you film a subject that does not know what they're doing. Yeah. And even if that person's face is not on camera, and even if they're not saying anything, you can tell. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. that Ricky Bobby, like, what should I do with what should I do with my hands? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I know you haven't watched it yet, but there's I've, that show. I never saw that trick online. Never. I've never seen you do it till recently. No, you've seen me do it. Maybe I just didn't notice. No, One thing I've done other it. thing you did is you you wrapped a meat side down. Or sorry, meat side up, which mm -hmm. you don't typically do. Right. Well, this is a way you can do that at home to save your rub. Yeah. I'm going to do it next time. So in, in the thumbnail, I don't know which one is going to make the final well, you thumbnail. Got, you got the one But like the this. one holding it up like that, you couldn't have got that the way I did it. it. Doing it that way, you would have had to re-rub it, yeah. put it back on the cooker, reset it, mm -hmm. whereas I didn't have to do that. And that was before the, the glaze went on, too. Yeah. So, like, if... And, and here's the deal. Uh, baby backs, I genuinely generally don't wrap at all i cook them till they hit you know they just cook so fast I they mean, cook so yeah. fast and you know me i'm a i'm a i'm a trash can guy yep i like my baby backs done in the can yep a little crusty on them that's mm -hmm. just how i like to eat baby they backs are good uh this version of baby backs was a little bit different we could have done this rib in a can uh it wouldn't have looked the same no and you know we were going for that cherry Cherry, pop, cherry flavor. Popping cherry, red. Yeah. The only way I could have gotten more out of it is if I'd have done it on a a, a Weber, my El Ray, my Jambo, my Damn. JP. Kyle, you got a lot of smokers. Yeah, I know. That's, that's why I love when people go, I just want to make a video with like all of the cookers I own. And then when they go, oh, how does this guy know what he's talking about? I had, I had literally, I'm not going to say the name of the person or the comment that this guy made but I, I when he made it to me he said you really need to go take a class from beep you know i'm not gonna say the name and i was like my friend you couldn't sound more stupid <laughs> if you absolutely went to school for eight years on how to sound so so dumb I remember when he told me that it offended me a little bit. I'm just kidding. Uh, and I was like, don't get me wrong. I am the type and you, everybody here has heard me say it. I am the type of guy that always, you know, believes I can learn something. And I always look and listen and try to find the, the, the needles in the haystack. But when you make a comment that is that f ignorant, like mm -hmm. I, I just go, Hey man, you need to, you need to leave my store. You need to leave my press. You need to just get away from me because, it, and it goes back to this old saying, it's better to let people think you're stupid rather than open your mouth and remove all doubt. Yeah. Because that was the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. It's like, but, hey, hey, Tom Brady, man, there's a quarterback camp down the road. You ought to stop in, man. Good stuff in that camp. Yeah. Now, it would have been different if the person they used would have been like, you know, my good friend, Tuffy. I would go to Tuffy's class. Tuffy, Tuffy. He's got a rib video. I watched every second of that thing. Yeah. So you have you ever met Tuffy? Never met him. You got to sit down with me and Tuffy. He seems cool. I, I want to invite him to the podcast. Let's do it. I'm sure he'd be well, down. Well, I never know your schedule, man. Well, you, will you, will you, you make, just call me. Okay. Be like, hey, man, you want to um, hang out with me and Tuffy? But yeah. Tuffy, so Tuffy, uh, Travis, 
Yeah. Travis is the same way. I mean, Travis is. He's still out there just winning, just out there cooking every weekend, winning. Well, he understands. He, he does. He gets it. He's serious. He gets it. Tuffy, Tuffy gets it. Uh, Myron is the same way. Um, Darren uh, from Iowa Smoky D's is the same way. Mm-hmm. You know, they just get it, you know. And then, now, granted, I haven't competed in a couple of years. I sold my trailer, and I thought I was going to get it back at some point, but that never happened. Uh, who's got your trailer? I don't know anymore. As, uh, I don't want to say no names. I don't even want to get into it. <laughs> Let's just keep going right on by it. <laughs> That's for another time. <laughs> well, it was it was sold on the, you know. Yeah. Never mind. We don't have to, we don't have to get into yeah. it. Anyhow. That's a can of worms. Um, but these ribs, um, it out of everything that we did to them, what did you like? What do you think we could do better? I like wrapping a baby back. I just do. I think they're they're a little too tough for me when you don't wrap them. Yeah. And I'm not saying you. I just mean generally. No, no, they, like and, when and you don't are, wrap yeah. them, that I. But I, I don't typically cook. I mean, if you're cooking for like t- a ton of people, throw yeah. them in the can and hang them. And don't yeah. wrap them and just let them cook. Those just are fine. No on the bone. Yeah. But if you go. Like you got one rack, you want them all to be pretty good. I'll, I'll wrap those and take my time. Baby backs too. Yeah, baby backs too, for okay. sure. I don't think there was anything I didn't like. I mean, I know we cooked them on the Traeger, and we've been talking about charcoal for the ribs. I think we're, we have a charcoal-leaning preference hey, I, on them. I'm going to say something, and uh, probably a lot of backyard cooks are going to go, yeah, I've thought about that, but I'm going to see if you've thought about that. Because I used to do this in competition. When I wanted this rib to come across this way, mm. I would spray with that juice. I actually went to Walmart and didn't put it on the list. I was going to find some cherry juice. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Spray it with cherry juice. That would have been the thing, man. Yeah. Yeah. Especially on a Weber. If mm-hmm. you cooked them on the Weber with, Tack some, up like with that. some cherry wood. Have you seen what cherry wood does? To- oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's brightens ridiculous. it up big time. Yeah. It's cool. It's like it's like the entire, you know, gamut of how to get your meat red. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's going to be a snippet. Uh-oh. Know. Sound bite. Uh, get him. S- side note, since we talked about so much about music, this is going to run a little bit long. Have you heard Travis Tritt's song, Way Down Yonder on the Chattahoochee? Oh, yeah. Do you remember the part, uh, I was willing, but she wasn't ready? So I settled for a burger and a grape snow cone. Uh uh-uh. uh. That's part of the song. I was willing, but she wasn't ready. So I settled for a burger and a grape snow cone. Do you know what that means? No. I was today years old yesterday when I found out what that means. What is it? Is it a coded message? 1000% it is. Uh-oh. He's a dog. He, I mean, he is a freaking, like, he just elevated himself to, it wasn't, did I say Travis Tritt? Yeah. What Travis Tritt was it? Hold on. Let's, no, let's, I, let's find out. Jamie, can you look that up for us? No, it wasn't Travis Tritt. It was Alan Jackson. Way down yonder. It's Alan Jackson. Alan Jackson's yeah. called Chattahoochee. Alan Jackson just solidified himself with with the boys' club around the world. I'll say that. See, uh, do you want? I tell you what, Google. I uh, so I settle. So Google burger and grape snow cone, and then read the definition that it has on there. Provided it doesn't get graphic. <laughs> I just read it in context. I'm thinking, ah. So I settled. Here we go. Uh, this is what the phrase burger in a grape snow cone actually means. <laughs> get ready. Is slang for a sexual act. <laughs> uh, this article has nothing to do with our favorite carnival fair. <laughs> Uh, TikTok recently revived. Not talking about food. Wink, reading? wink. It's an article. No, it's talking but, about the TikTok. No, on Google. That's Just, I googled it. No, okay. Go back and read the very first thing it says at the top. 
because it always gives the you know the technical you know the you know the the Webster's Dictionary, oh. the Wikipedia, or the you know, a burger and a grape snow cone is a euphemism to describe the sixty nine position. According to Urban Dictionary. Yeah. Mm. Did you did you shorten that? I have edited this, yes. Yeah. yeah. I didn't <sighs> know that. The burger represents oh, the female. Yeah. And the and the grape snow cone represents the male. Yeah. Didn't know that Alan Jackson. Golly. Alan, like you he just dog. Got elevated, man. Alan Jackson. Look at him in this video too. He's got a Cowboys jersey on. That was probably back when they were good. <laughs> yeah, 20 years ago. What a snapshot. It's been 20 years since they, was it 20 since they won the Super Bowl? Oh, long enough. Let's see. Jesus Christ. That's an old song. Jerry Jones is making, like, he, tur- he that's a business to him, and he is making money hand over fist. Yeah, they don't like, have to win. Jesus Christ, man. You've like, been to that stadium, though. It's like football is the last thing on his metrics. <sighs> win is like, you know. Winning a football He season. wants to win bad though. I think they let Dak Prescott or not uh or Zeke. I think they let him walk. Yeah, they did let him which go. Which was a good move. Yeah. What they a did. disappointment, man. Man, it's just I mean like- he averaged like seven or eight yards a carrier initially, which is a lot, but there's a lot of controversy about running backs in the NFL going on right right about now. The Saquon Barkley thing. Hell, I don't know. Well, man. you got running quarterbacks now. That's like that's the franchise. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes, Kyler Murray, Lamar Jackson. I mean, the list goes on. Joe Burrow's not much of a runner. He's a, bit, a callback to kind of that pocket work guy. No, but he's I slippery. I, could, I think I could run Joe Burrow down there. Yeah, I think I could. Tom Brady. I don't like. He'd find a way. Yeah, even watching him. I just watched him in a Mr. Beast video. Yeah. And he just. When he threw the ball on the yacht. Yeah. Yeah. Bonkers. But you see him walk and you go, this guy. Freaking icon. Like looks like he couldn't, you know, he couldn't, you know, run out of a burning building. And then, you know, and then like he gets put into his zone. Yeah. And shit. The GOAT. He is. He is the GOAT. All time. And the wins were not handed to him. It was not engineered. He had to pull those out. And I'm a Cowboys fan. Dude, I'm a Tom Brady fan. He went to Tampa and won the Super Bowl. That was just cemented him. Like, you go to Tampa, who had no chance of being in the Super Bowl when the season started? That's like saying, I'll dunk on you anytime, any place, anywhere. Yeah. He's Uh, like, I'm going to go to a team with marginal talent. They had some talent. He's like, we're going to make everybody good and win the Super Bowl. And then they did. Yeah. Wild. Patrick Mahomes, I heard nothing but great things about him. He'll be a generational talent for sure. Yeah. Because he's doing what Brady struggled to do for years. There's no worse fan than a – when I lived outside of KC, I lived around – well, I'm going to say this. There's no worse fan than the than your friends with the absolute lunatic fans of that franchise. <laughs> you know, they they have the worst lunatic fans. No, 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 they all have them. You know, but Jesus Christ, like I had the worst lunatic friends. Oh, yeah, like naming their baby Patrick after yeah. the quarterback. Yeah, yeah, it happens. It happens every day to but good people. Casey, like, you know, I, I've. I think I need to put it up for vote somewhere. Maybe it's me and Jerry Jones. Like if if another f- team would have me, it would. I'd have to go to KC. Uh, Andy Reid's cool. Andy Reid's cool. I love the city. The people there are yeah. phenomenal. I've actually never been. You've never I've never been to Kansas mouth. City. Oh my god, that place! Is I'd love to go. Amazing. People say it's cool. It's amazing. It's like five hours from here. It's six like hours. Way better than Oklahoma. It's like Oklahoma City, but you know, way better. Yeah. Hmm. I'll be open Way to try it. Way more people, too. I sure. Mean, you know. Yeah, that's what makes Oklahoma City nice. <laughs> Get yeah. some breathing room. Yeah. Way more people. But the food there, the scenes mm. there, the football, the the baseball. Did I tell you that story about... Uh, uh, the Royals? Uh, yeah. About, what's his name? I always forget his damn name. Mm. The... Uh, the, the pitcher? 
No, he wasn't a pitcher. He was a shortstop. Only only guy I can think of is Derek Jeter, but he didn't play. No, no, for no. Kansas he's City. older than that. He played back in the eighties. See, that would have been out of look mind. It up, look it up. Kansas City Royals shortstop. Yeah, I, I always forget his damn name. And then you're gonna say it, and I'm gonna go, yeah, oh yeah, I'll remember that. I don't know why Roger Clemens sticks in my head every time. Who you know is not a, you know. Uh, well, it show me. It show me who they are now. Uh, legendary Kansas City George baseman. George Brett George Brett oh, he was the third baseman oh uh, was he yeah I thought he was short man he spent his whole career there 21 years yeah dude. wow uh, guy still what time when did he retire 93 no shit 90 or 73 to 93 shut the f- that's bonkers I'm telling you man Five years ago, probably five or six years. No, it was five years ago. So, 30 years after he retired. First of all, I was like, so I, I was at an event. And I was like, hey, man, who's that old man over there with all them <laughs> girls hanging around him? And he's like, oh, that's just a friend of ours. I was like, man, that guy's got some sickest looking calves I've ever seen. <laughs> so, I was like, I'm going to go tell him. So, and excuse he, me, he sir. Just, he just lets me go. He just lets me go. He didn't stop you. Nope. I had no clue who it was. And I said, hey, man, uh, dude, what do you do to, to work out your calves? And he goes, nothing. I said, dude, you got some killer calves, man. I said, I ain't, you know, I ain't gay or anything. I'm not like but that. I'm, but I, 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 all I'm saying is, is whatever, whatever game, you do, keep doing it. Game recognizes game. game. game recognizes <laughs> game. I went back and my buddy was laughing. He's like, you realize who that was? I was like, no. And this guy like literally had like chiseled 25s hanging on him, not hanging on him physically. You know, no, but yeah, well. like they were, they were putting it out there that just in case, you know, you, you know, think about challenging <laughs> me to a foot race. Uh, he said, man, that's George Brett. And I said, shut your damn mouth. Why did you let me Why do that? Why did you let me do that? And he goes, I just want to see if you do it. I'll be honest with you. Well, there's that story, which reminds me of you on two separate occasions peeing next to Dave Grohl. <laughs> At the same, like, yeah. you talk about all the variables there. <laughs> Who's a huge barbecue guy? Yeah. You know, like, what is the chance? He told a story about, he was telling a story in, on an interview about his his funk influence. Like that's how he like derived oh, a lot yeah. of his playing. Yeah. yeah. And he said he was talking to the drummer from the Gap Band. Yep. And he had him at his house for a barbecue. And he was like, "Man, I gotta thank you, man. I'm like, for my whole career, I've just been ripping you off." And the guy said, "I know." <laughs> it's funny. I was telling that story about uh, Dave Grohl to a guy uh, at that works for Jack Daniels in Houston. He goes, man, that's funny because he's texting me right now. Jeez. And he texts back and forth. I said, well, tell him, tell him uh, uh, I'm over here looking for a pisser. <laughs> <laughs> tell him I want to have dinner with you, please. No, I don't. I don't. I don't know, man. Like stuff like that doesn't like. It'd be cool. Don't get me oh, wrong. Be so you cool. Know? But just to it, hang out with him. Well, just to hang out with. Him. I, I, he's a cool dude. Uh, but. I, I just sit there and I go, I'm like guys like that don't want to, you know, get interviewed, you know, and that's what that's what people. And I, oh, yeah, and tell my, me what it's like when you did the. My thing, goal you know? would be not to do that. Yeah, be like Dave, what's up, man? Here yeah. we are at dinner, huh? Yeah. Now talk barbecue. I think him and I could talk barbecue. Oh sure. And then I'd I'd call you and I'd he'd say, man, where's your friend Wes? And I'd be like, he'd be oh, like who? Wes, I don't know. I don't know. I don't busy. know anybody by that name. Never heard of him. You tell me. Oh, I'm always busy. I'll call you where? Yeah, we're at the lake. Gotta go. Would you? Let me ask you this: If Dave showed up here and was gonna cook with us, or hang out with us one evening, and you had, and I called you, and you was like, "I'm driving to another deal," I would cancel. I'd be like, I have to go hang out with Dave Grohl. Doesn't matter. Would you have canceled yesterday or Monday? Monday, the thing you did Monday? After Monday, yes, I would have canceled that. No, no, not after. If I called no, you. No, I mean, after what were, happened on Monday, I absolutely would oh, have canceled that. No, I didn't hear what happened, so. All right, well. 
Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you like what we're doing, share this with a friend. Uh, Make the ribs. We greatly appreciate it. Make the freaking ribs. I don't even care if you use the rubs, which we didn't even talk about the Q Cosmos Q Lab. That one's uh, top secret, apparently, because I, I don't even have any. And it's right in front of everybody's face. Mm. And it's, all I'm doing is just proving how lazy people are nowadays. That cuts deep. That cuts deep. <laughs> it's right on the website, go man. And sign off so you I can, can go, go cry sign in the up corner. To be in the Q Club right on the website, but you better make sure you Hold get on. in the Facebook you group. You better end it. I'm going to sign up right now. All right. I want to thank everybody for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode. Peace.